word last night that he was chosen as one of the best actors in this um, in this pod of, yeah. of, of four thousand students. So we praise God for that. And um, I just I thank God for my leaders, Dr. James and Dr. Stacia Pierce in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ministry that I'm working out of now. And um, wow. Okay, Lord. So. I'm, I'm going to go through what he's given me as the word, but periodically I have to stop and tell you all what he's given me as well. Okay. Chiquita, have you written your next book? Okay. okay, so he said start writing now, get it together because it's going to be so powerful and he's already birthed in you what it's supposed to be about. Amen. And it has something to do with integrity. Amen. Something to do with integrity. He says go forth now. And he's also told me to tell you about a venue where you're going to go so far uh, because this one won't just sit on the shelves. This one is going to go throughout the nation. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I don't have enough time because I got this and I got this going on and I got these babies and this going on and I got the church and I got my work. Da -da. He says, mm -mm, take time and write the book. Yeah. Right. Yes. But there's such a powerful word in you that will move the nation. Yes. That will move the nation. Your ability to connect with the business world <laughs> through the spirituality of God is what the world needs to hear now. Yes. I did not gift you for this just this area. <laughs> you said out of your mouth you're going to the world yeah. and so you can't get to the world unless you do what I told you to do with the world yeah. don't waste the prayers of those people that are underneath you that have been praying for you to get to where you're going yeah. my god yeah. uh, this is, and this one, I call Roma Coco. This one won't take much time because the word is already in your belly. Ikashi mm, spoke to me this morning about that book, Integrity. It's something with integrity, and he's going to let it flow through your spirit, and it's going to flow so easily. And whoever it is that is accompanying you as you're writing this book, there is a greater anointing that will fall on them and God has already placed in your spirit who that person is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you ever um, get ready to do something and you're so excited that you got to calm yourself down? Yeah. To kind of keep your composure just a little bit. That's really what I'm doing. That's my hand is in my pocket because I'm so excited. I feel like I can just fly. Like an eagle or something like that. Who father? Hallelujah. Faith knows the final score. Faith knows the final score. Deuteronomy 1, 34 through 36 reads as thus. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men, this evil generation, see the good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephthah, he shall see it, and to him will I give the land he hath trodden upon to his children. Holy follow the Lord. Holy follow the Lord. In other words, you have to make sure that you eliminate anything out of your life that's keeping you from holy following the Lord. You have to eliminate anything out of your life that's keeping you from holy following the Lord. God, I hear you in this place. The scripture says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Not I can't. So I've learned to eliminate the I can't out of my vocabulary. Yeah. I just don't have time for it. I got too many places to go, yeah. too many things to do in the kingdom, for the kingdom, yeah. to use the words I can't, right. or I don't have, right. or I may not make it. The devil is a liar. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Yeah. If I focus on the I can't, if I focus on what's bad, if I focus on what's not there, I'll stay right there. Yeah. 
But if I look unto the hills from which cometh my help, knowing that my help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth, then I begin to go just a little bit further. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah in this place. So here's Caleb. <laughs> The decree from Moses, from God, through Moses, to Caleb, basically saying, um, all of these people are not going to get what's been promised, all right. but you're going to get yours. Yeah. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to get yours. Yeah. And notice the title. The title said, Faith Knows the Final Score. Yeah. Yeah. So here's Caleb, and then he's waiting 45 years, 45 years later, and he goes to Joshua now, who's the leader. And he said, and here's it, in Joshua 14, verse 6 through 8. It says, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, thee, me and thee, in Kadesh of Barnea. Yes, yes. Thou knowest uh -huh. the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh, Barnea. Thou, thou knowest. Yeah, you know. You know what God said concerning me. All right. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. You know what God said concerning me. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. You know what God said you know what concerning, me. concerning me. Every now and then, you gotta tell yourself, you know what God concerning you. Living in the world that we live in, they don't always know God like we know God, but if you know God, then you know what God said concerning you. You know what God said concerning you. Somebody say hallelujah. 40 years old, and I when was I, when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land? I brought him word again, and it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord. I wholly followed the Lord. Here's the interesting part about that. Moses noticed that Caleb was wholly following the Lord even at the age of 40. So, what Caleb proves is this, that even at the age of now 85, throughout the 45 years, I still kept wholly following the Lord. In other words, I didn't give up because my faith knows the final score. My faith knows that I got something in store for me that you cannot have. I don't care how bad it is, I don't care how bad it looks. If it's mine, it's mine, and the devil can't take it. Say your neighbor, say faith knows the final score. In other words, you coming out, and you coming out victoriously. Hey! Somebody shout, say, I'm coming out! I'm coming out with the victory. The interesting thing about Caleb is that he knew what was his. And a lot of times, we'll pray the prayer that says, well, if it's in his will, then I guess I'll, I'll get this job. If it's in his will, I guess I'll, I'll get the... You got to understand it. You know what God had already promised you. So stop saying him. And declare a thing and speak a thing into existence. Hallelujah, somebody. I wish above all that my people would prosper and be in hell. So why would God want you to suffer? No! Nothing but the enemy. A spirit of oppression will keep you down and make you think you can only get this much. But I serve a God that can and will supply more than enough. I serve a God that, that not only gives me what I need, but gives me the desires of my heart. So in other words, I don't just look for 500 to pay a bill. I look for the overflow.
we're trying to stay humble and, and it's okay. That's wonderful. Yes, you want to be humble. But at the same time, God wants you to use your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Can I tell you why it is? Why? Because the only way that gets me into the kingdom is my faith. what you don't like, what you can't have, 
and all those negative things, then your posture is weak. But if your posture is positive and optimistic, then you look a whole different way. Yeah. So if I say positive and optimistic, I, I believe that everything is going to work out for my good, yeah. no matter what it is. Yeah. And, what ends up, and what ends up happening, there are things that you pray for and that you desire and you seek God, and there's more favor that comes your way of things that you weren't even expecting God to do. Amen. Yeah. 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 Hear me in a minute. So I've been praying for this thing and this thing, you know, and I want this to work out. And so because my posture is where it needs to be, then I not only get that, but I get something else on the side. Yes. What are you saying? So I get a job a few years back that I wasn't even qualified to get. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I wasn't even qualified to get it. But because I was on the job and my posture was saying that I'm going to keep this job as long as I want this job, uh -huh. then they made sure that I got the qualifications that I needed to keep the job. And then they realized that, wait a minute, you already had this qualification, so we owe you some more money from the years that you've already been working on this job. I'm going to paint it real quick. So I start teaching at this school, and I didn't have my full certification. But I can teach anybody how to sing. Some people. Uh, anyway, so I started teaching on the job, and when I started the job, I had my bachelor's degree and I had a master's degree, but didn't have a certification. Yes. They paid for my schooling to get the certification, yes. Yes. and it was expensive, but they paid for all of it. All of it. But then once I got the certification, they looked at it and said, wait a minute. They said, you had a master's when you started with us. I said, yes, ma'am, I did. I said, oh, no, we got to go recalculate. We owe you some money. I wanted to paint it clear so that you can see how God's getting ready to bless you. Yes. There was another incident in my life where I needed something and then I learned a principle. That's the maze. I learned if I sow seed on a thing, something can really, really happen. In my faith. If I sow seed for where I want to go, for where I want to get to, or for what even I want, things begin to come in my life. That's right. That's right. Faith knows. The final score. The final score. Yes. And so as I'm going through, I gotta make sure that my posture is where it needs to be. Amen. I gotta look like I know that I'm a winner. All right. 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 Yes. Right. I said I gotta look like I know that I'm a winner. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, you gotta look like yes. you know yes. that you are a winner. Yes. Why? Because that's also a part of your ambassadorship for Christ. Yes. 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 Saints should look all and done and then looking all depressed and, and down like you've been sucking on a lemon and you drinking prune juice or something. No, you gotta look like you are blessed, healed, delivered, and set free. Yeah. That you are prosperous, that you're more than a power, that you are a winner. Yeah. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Oh, Y'all say I'm probably car now. No, I'm not. I'm just a winner. Ha ha ha. On the devil's head. Yeah. Look at your neighbor say, I where Paul was capturing him and some prisoners in. They got on a boat to go across the sea. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid because the storm was high. Yeah. So high that they felt like they were about to be killed on this ship. Yeah. About to be killed on the ship. And the amazing part is when you know what you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, so when you know what you know, you don't have to worry. It may look bad. And something bad just may happen. But it don't mean that you're defeated. Did you hear what I said? It may look bad. And something bad may happen, but it doesn't mean that you're defeated. Because what I look at it like this is when I'm going through something and I know that I'm still going to win and I still got to go through this bad storm or whatever, it just gives me a bigger testimony. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Acts 27, verse 21 through 25 says this. 
But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should not, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. Wow. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and who, whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as was told me. So here they are in this ship, and this storm is pretty much tearing up the ship. And they've get, gotten to a place where they can't go any further, and it's looking like the ship is about to crash. And so you would think that the only thing they do is just, you know, kill themselves, because they're probably going to die. He said, wait a minute, y'all should have y'all come check with me first. Because the angel of God had already told me y'all going to make it through. All y'all needed to do was just come check with me. Because yeah. I already know what's going to happen. Right. So you worried about something. you trying to figure this out. The God already told me you won't make it through. Right. So why are, you, why are you worrying about it? Mm. Uh, it takes fear, faith, don't mix. Amen. Amen. Fear and faith Amen. don't mix. Amen. Oil and water Amen. don't mix. Amen. So how can I be in faith and I'm afraid? Why? Let's knock that out the box. Fear and faith don't mix. Amen. I'm almost done. Watch this. What's the title? Faith, faith knows the final score. Say it again. What is it? Faith knows the final score. So, you ever watch a game or for musicians, the Grammys? Uh -huh. Just something where you didn't get a chance to watch it when it aired for the first time. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, you know, so you, you record it. So you can go back and watch it. Uh -huh. You want to know what happened. Yeah. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. And just don't it get on your nerve when you get ready to watch this game. And right before you watch the game, somebody come up to you and say, oh, so-and-so didn't want. So-and-so didn't want it. And so you're like, oh, man. And you want to see the game, right? Because see, when you watch the game, before anybody tells you about the game, you're in anticipation of what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay? And so you watch the game, and here's your team over here, they're up, and they're down. There's your team over here, and then another team over here, they're trying to beat you. And you sometimes it gets to the point where it looks like this other team that you didn't want to win is about to win. But you keep watching the game in anticipation. Like, Come on, guys, I know y'all can do it. And if you're anything like my wife, you know, she hollers. TV like they can hear <laughs> But your posture is in a state of anticipation because you still believe that your team can come through. You still believe that your team can actually win this one. And it may look as crazy as 42 to zip in the third quarter. <laughs> but right at the end of the third quarter, your team scores a touchdown.
I ain't gonna play So if I'm looking at the game as if I already know, I'm not sweating about it, I'm just looking at it. Uh -huh. But I want to see the game. So, Chiquita, what I learned from that is this. If I'm in the game, I got to look like I know that I'm the winner. Yes. 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 You ever encounter those people that come with so much faith and they're talking really good stuff? I'm talking about people in the world that talk like they got everything together yes. and they ain't even going to church. Yes. I'm show y'all something. They're not even going to church and they got this kind of bling bling. and they're happy and things are going good for them. What, it, they, what happens is they increase their posture. They build it up. And so they believe in themselves. They believe in themselves so the outcome is a whole lot different than that person that's living in fear and living in bondage and living oppressed. But what happens is the saints of God improve. What happens when we improve our posture? Because I got Jesus on the side. I'm like that guy. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Faith knows the final score. Yeah. Why are you sweat? You know you a winner. Yeah. Why are you worried about it? Yeah. You know you're victorious yeah. in everything that you put your mind to. Yeah. You're a winner, man. Yeah. You're not defeated. Yeah. You may have been hurting, or you may be hurting. You may be going through. Because see, when you're in the game. Things will happen in the game. You may get knocked down. You may get beat up. It may look like you're not going to win, but faith knows the final score. Go ahead. Four That's it. Faith knows. Final score. But verily, I say unto you that who so well, shall say unto this mountain, yes, yes, yes. be thou removed, yes. be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, no. yes. shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to, which he saith, which he said it's a small h on that. Let's talk about y'all. Which he said shall come to pass, he shall he, small age again, shall have whatsoever he saith. The small age again, he said, which means you. You. If, if you, you're going to catch this. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and shall believe those things. In other words, you believe these things, that you say it. You shall have yeah. whatever you say. You shall have whatever you say. Not just what you need, but what you say. Not just your desires, but what you say. You shall have whatsoever you say. So, I'm expecting by 35, I'm going to see a millionaire. Because she said because she said Sweetie, can I tell you something? I challenge you to say that you'll only have to work one job making double the amount that you would have made on two jobs. You said what you say. Somebody shall glory in this place. You'll have what you say. Why? Because faith knows the final score. When you sit at your table yes. and bless your food, it's blessed because you say it. But when you sit there and you bow your head and you just, you ain't say it now. And then you wonder why you got food poisoning. Because you didn't say your blessing. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Are you going to speak life or are you going to 
two feet down. What did you say? What did you say to the reason why you're feeling the way you're feeling right now? What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? Song that came back came out a few years ago. A, a great artist of mine. I just love to hear his music. Song said, "Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say." Now, at the time that this song came out, I was going through some stuff. And you know what I kept saying? I want to say what I want to say, but I can't. So I couldn't have anything because I said that I can't say it. Because I said I can't say it. But thank God for a new revelation. Thank God for deliverance. Gets me to the point where I say what I need to say. Where I speak into existence those things I only thought about in my mind. That I speak those things that are not as though they were, and they come to pass. Yes. Say what you need to say, because faith knows <laughs> the final score. Amen. If you believe that God will bless you to live in a way where you can pay all of your bills, And live comfortably. Uh -huh. And that's what you say. Jesus. That's what you'll have. Amen. But if you believe that if you say even more than that. Oh see, you have the God that you believe in. Amen. You have the God that you believe in. Y'all are feeling it, man. You have a God that you believe in. Your God may just supply your needs. And take care of you. You good like that. You good. But my God opens up some doors I wasn't even waiting on. My God gives me not only more than enough, but he gives me the overflow. My God allows me to exist in a category that people say I would never even get to. My God takes me into a higher tax bracket. Somebody don't hear me. I'm talking about my God. My God gives me more than what I just see. He gives me more. sustainable job where I can do what I need to do and be happy doing what I do. Yes. 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 See, once I started working, I mean, y'all hear me on this one. Once I started working, I was determined when I graduated from high school that I was not going to get another job where I didn't like it. And I just feel like God can bless me to do what I need to do and do what I love doing. I encourage young people all the time, don't get a job because you think it's going to help you make a whole bunch of money and then you're going to not be happy. You want to be happy. Amen. I feel like this. I can be happy and work this good job doing what I love doing and be abundantly supplied. Yeah. Abundantly supplied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, say what you need to say. So here I am moving to Orlando, Florida, and I started a job. Started working one job just because we well, we do what we have to do sometimes. Amen. Amen. I'm show you something, then we're gonna pray. Yes. We do what we gotta do sometimes. And so, right. you know, I got three kids and I want them to be blessed. I want them to be happy. I want yes. them yes. to, to yes. get what they need. You understand what I'm saying? So I got this job and I'm on this job and I was working for a, um, uh, a telemarketing company. Well, kind of like telemarketing. Anyway, we sold American Express business charge cards. American Express is a really nice company, by the way. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'm working at this company and I'm calling businesses, not just individual people. 
and you know, trying to get them to purchase this charge card. And I believe to get the charge card. I'll tell you something too. I'm not gonna work nothing that I don't believe in. Not only that. And so I believe in the charge card. I'm like, okay, this is really good. This is good for business. So I'm pushing it, right? You know, and we have we had a certain amount that we made per hour, and then we received commission if we got so many sales out. Yes. And so yes. within the first month, actually before the month was completed, I was one of the top salesmen on my job. Uh -huh. And so I was getting these little commission checks, and it's looking good. And my wife's like, "Ooh, man, you should stay on the job." But I get on the job, and I'm like, "I'm not supposed to be here." Yeah. I'm not supposed. This is not what he called me to do. I did not move all the way to beautiful Orlando, Florida, to work on the job, and I'm not. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. I said, okay, Lord, so I, I, I okay, all right. I said what I need to say. I said, oh, today's my last day. They said, well, what's wrong? I said, nothing. I, I just got to do what I got to do. So, oh, well, you know, when we hired you, we were expecting you to commit. I said, yeah, I, I, I know. I, yeah, mm, I, yeah, okay. All right, y'all right, y'all be blessed. I love you. See you later. I said, oh, you got another job by now? Oh, yeah, it's a big time job. I'm a vocal coach. Y'all gonna hear me in a minute. I said, yeah, I got a big time job, I'm a vocal coach. And at that time, I didn't even have one student. And so you already got somebody else, I got it all lined up, it's great. It's gonna be bringing in so much money, I'm telling you, it's, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great, we're great. Cause what I had did to get is I already set it up. So that I said, Lord, I wanna make at least $4,000 a month from this job. Come on now. And I mean, I'll put my faith out there, it's crazy. I'm crazy. Let's put my faith out there, right? And so, <laughs> I'm gonna show you something in a minute. So I, I walk off the job. My wife said, Well, why do you do that? And we ain't got this, we ain't got this. I said, oh, my man, man. And so because the pressure was on, I went and found something else to do that really wasn't all right. what I was supposed to do either. Yeah. But it was a little bit close. Yeah. So I started working at a community center. I'm working with some kids. And I said, Okay, you know, I'm, I'm not teaching in the classroom, but I love working with the kids, right? So, you know, it was all right. It was the summertime, doing a little summer camp. It was cool. I was like, okay, we can do a little music. I'll teach them song. I love writing, you know, stuff like that. Or whatever. So I taught them song, and they was enjoying. They ain't having a ball time, having a ball time. I said, Lord, I'm not supposed to be here either. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, he was basically telling me, okay, Kurt, when you gonna do what you know you're supposed to do? Yeah. And every time I end up in that state, not only that I'm not working the job and I'm unhappy, but my spirit man is going down. When I would be positive and, and, and think that everything is going to work out, now I'm feeling like weak, like I can't do this, I ain't going to be able to do this. You see, when you make decisions that are not lined up with what God already has in store for your life, that it brings you to a great state of oppression. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And so you got to know when it's time for you to come out of that vein. Amen. Would you tell somebody that I'm coming out of that vein? So here I am on this next shot, I said, you know what? I said, enough is enough. I'm not going to work another job that I know I'm not supposed to work. So I come off the job in September, I believe. And in less than a month, do you hear what I'm saying? In less than a month, me vocal coaching went from a little $500, you know, a month to like almost over $2,000 in a month's time like that. I said, Lord, I don't want to only coach in this area. I want to be uh, international. I want to go all over the world, but I don't want to have to leave my city because I love to. See, I serve a God that can do the impossible. <laughs> want to be able to coach from all over the world. Connect me. You can do it, God. So he connects me. Not only does he connect me with people throughout the world, throughout the nation or whatever, but he gives me a system in how to do it. Amen. And so I hadn't even thought of it, but I connected with a coach, a life coach, and she said, you know what? You ought to be able to do some lessons online. I said, oh, wow. I hadn't thought about that. So I got my website all together. I was geeked, looking at me dancing, you know, I was all geeked up or whatever. And I'm not going to say what it's not. I'm going to say what it's going to be. So I said, Lord, I want to be able to lay down and sleep at night and wake up in the morning and look at my email and see money coming in. I want to make oh! I want to make money while I'm sleeping. God, you are God. I know you can do it. You did it for other people. You can do it for me. I can't tell you how excited I was one morning. I woke up and it was only ten dollars more, but it didn't matter. I made some money while I was sleeping. The increase in my finance didn't come in, until I sold a seat. Yes. 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 Faith knows the final score. The final score.
more. I come out victorious. I see you all thinking right now about where you want to be in this year, in the next few years. I see you thinking, so many of you are thinking about this right now. What is your final score? Where, where do you want to be? Where do you want to take this? I see it. See, you're thinking about this. You go where you want to go. But you got to believe it. So you got to believe it. <clears throat> Where do you want to go? Without a vision, the people, yes, without a vision, the people, Perish. that word was not given just for pastors. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Wasn't given just for preachers. Amen. Amen. Given for all of us. All of us. What's your vision? Yeah, what are you looking towards? Jesus. I gotta say this. Something soft. That I gave Felicia. Last Felicia. And I started doing this at the top of this year. It's important that I Step forward, take charge, use my faith, get the victory, and glorify God. Say it after me. Say, step forward, step forward. Take, charge. take charge, use my faith, use my faith. Get, the victory. get the victory, glorify God. Glorify God. Say it again. Step forward, step forward. like Caleb did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb, step forward. Yes, <laughs> At 85 years old. Yes. He was like, okay. Step four. Yes. He told Joshua, you know us. He took charge. You know. Yes. Take charge. You know. That's right. Yes. You know what God said through Moses about me and you. Yes. Yes. Somebody say, take charge. Take charge. Use my name. He went with the inclination that he's about to get his land. Amen. Purchase his land. And here's the other thing. He said, use his faith. So he had to back to even get the land that he was promised. But his faith tale told him that I'm able to defeat whoever I need to defeat and win this battle. Yeah. Even at 85 years old. Y'all read the story. Even at 85 years old, he was using his faith. Yeah. Step forward. Yeah. Take charge. Use the victory. Yeah. He got the victory because he defeated them. Yeah. And then glorify God because he's living on his land. Anybody ready to live on your land? Yeah. I said, anybody ready to live on your land? Yeah. What God has for you is for you. Are you ready to live on your land? Yeah. Stand to your feet. Say it again. Say, step forward. Yeah. Take charge. Yeah. Use, my Use my faith. Get the victory. Yeah. Glory by God. Glory. Say it again. Step forward. Get the victory. Glory by God. Now that's God. That song is God. Right there. Yeah. That's when you're moving up the anointing because you know exactly what to play. You weren't in my prayer this morning, but however, you were in the spirit. <laughs> that's that anointing I was talking about last night. things that are going to happen in the next few minutes. The oppressed will go free. Every heavy, heavy burden that you've experienced is about to be lifted. It's about to be gone. Every hurt, heavy burden that's been on you is about to be undone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all every wicked device that's been coming in your life is about to be out the door. Right now. It's getting ready to happen today. It's getting ready to happen today. How do I know it? Because I said it. I said it. There is no mountain that's in my way today, right now, because I believe what I said. I'm not doubting. I'm not doubting at all. It's going to happen. It's going. You see it. I see it. I see you see it. You've got a smile on.
on your face that's like, yes, I got this. You're right. I believe it. I believe it. That's the posture I'm talking about right there. When you put a smile on your face like you can see your victorious moment, you can see yourself living in your land, that's the posture that you got to create right now. Like you got everything that you've been asking God for. Everything. I said like you got everything that you've been asking God for. And nothing to get in your way. Nothing to get in your way. So, here's my question. I'm going to ask some rhetorical questions, and then I'm going to ask some questions that I want you to lift your hand. But this first one is rhetorical. In other words, I just want you to think about this. Bring it down some. I want you to think about this. How many of you, don't raise your hand, how many of you in even this first month of this year, You've been in a state where you've been oppressed and you've been dealing with some stuff and it's kind of keeping you back. It's holding you down. Whether it's fear or people or circumstances or just issues that you're dealing with. And it's like you, you want to go further in life and you want to do more, but you still feel as if you're held. Yes, God. Some of you... Some of you are held back because of your past and because of the hurt that you experienced in your past. And because, wow, because you haven't forgiven the very persons that hurt you, person or persons, I hear persons, that hurt you, it's still holding you down because you haven't because you haven't forgiven them and you're trying to live right and do the right thing but your past keep catching up with you keep eating away at you and you end up making some mistakes that you don't want to normally make but you just you can't let it go because your past keeps haunting you God says today you will be free man you will be free today woman you will be free today Everything that was in your past is still in your past. It's not in your future and it's not in your presence. You will be free today, but you got to start saying it now. 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 Let me show you how real I am. Cuz I'm not I'm not playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing with the devil. I mean serious business. This is how serious it is. Serious to the point where in my childhood I was molested. And I went through a deliverance class. And I learned that a lot of times people go through what they go through because they're dealing with generational curses. 